This is it. Game week 38 plus, last game of the season, and what a season it has been. Uh, and it's pretty much uh, a nightmare for me at the moment. So it's a 27 point swing, it's just decisions like this this season, that and captaincy picks, um, which have really, really hurt me this season. But it's fine. Um, it, it just is what it is and we just keep going and there's plenty of time to still make it. I still believe I can aim for that sort of top 500k. So, unfortunately, I went into Sunday with a captaincy. I was on, I was above average uh, after Saturday, you know, a couple of clean sheets and some points on the board, especially in defense, you see Ludstrom and Pope. Um, and I, I was feeling pretty hopeful going into the game against Chelsea where I had Abraham, I had Son, I had Ali uh, in that match. And then, would you believe it, of course, Captain Son, minus two points below average. Uh, final points for me, 75. Now, of course, that is a fantastic game week for me. Um, kind of almost a double of average. It's been a while since I've kind of been having a great game week and other people and the average hasn't. Uh, it's been like a 1.9 million overall ranking to a 1.25 million so it's a really really big jump uh but let's just be honest it's just a couple of key decisions and this is an example of where things go bad for me and i explain the decisions don't get angry at the, at the result only the, the decisions and now it's the reverse side where i've got a great score and we still look back at the decisions and you know stand by them so i try to be you know just when i have a great game week like this game week i'm not going to sit here and boast about it i'll go through the reasons for the decisions just like i do when it's a bad game week it's a good score overall it could have been better of course we now know that manchester city and arsenal uh that fixture has been postponed from 1.9 million overall rank to inside the top 400k in 10 weeks since project restart we've put scores on the board at 85 90 74 and game week 33 was 83. we are looking right now at a rank of 175,000, and just remember, if you've been with me this season, I still massively appreciate people watching the videos, leaving likes and comments and subscribing and joining me for the live streams, which I do Friday when there's a deadline at 1 p.m. UK time or 12 p.m. Sorry, UK time. And I massively appreciate it because 10 weeks ago, I was in wilderness. I was 1.9 million in the world. I was having the worst season by far that I've ever had in the 10 years I played this game. And I was, that were, I say this before, like this is the season where I've been thinking, I'm gonna look at the stats. I'm gonna, you know, really focus on what I want to do and really improve. And it went horribly wrong. And we've gone from 1.9 million now to 175,000. And we've still got three players left to play. Welcome to the Game Week 38 preview video. We're going to be looking at the team selection, captaincy options, player picks, the whole shebang going into the final game week of the season. And we are looking at a potential top 100k finish. If you would have told me that 10 weeks ago, 5 weeks ago, I'd have said you're a madman. But here we are. We're knocking on the door. We're currently on 50 points for this game week with the average of 31. And we still have 5 players left to play, including Cap Captain Martial. Dreams could come true, everyone. Who knows? Let's see what happens. I know for a lot of people out there, 100,000, top 100k is not going to be a huge thing, but from where we were, uh, it just feels like that is my achievement for the season, my successful outlook on the season. Uh, hopefully, if you guys agree, let me know what you think in the comments below about your position. How has your season gone so far? It's been a difficult one. It's been a weird one, a tough one, obviously, with the, the virus outbreak and the stopping and the starting and the rotation. Now we've got the five subs and the five subs will go to next year. Is that going to change how FPL plays? We're going to have to wait and see. I think we're going to see some bare bones benches next year because I can't see a lot of rotation. Well, a lot of rotation happening, but not a lot of people missing 90 minutes. But let's have a look at game week 37 plus. And the, the man's at it again. Nick Pope is just, he's the Golden Glove winner, I believe. Can he be caught? I'm not 100% sure, but what, uh, what a man. And of course, he's at home to Brighton in the final game week of the season. Could he get another clean sheet and infuriate the rest of Twitter? One can only hope. Uh, I've still got the Liverpool game to go. Uh, and you can, and obviously Manchester United as well. Uh, so hopefully we're not going to see a lot of rotation there. I don't think we will. Um... It's a possibility because, you know, Liverpool have got nothing more to play for, but I'd be 
pretty upset if both of them don't play this one because I don't have any defenders because Holgate is injured and Lascelles is injured. So that could be an issue. Uh, Doherty, oh wow, 12 points. What a man, what a myth, what a legend. The Doc on the points board again. Uh, Raheem Sterling uh, and Kevin De Bruyne pulling in. I've actually, and if we scroll down, I've got points on the bench, guys. McCarthy with seven, who actually did better than Pope, uh, and Foden with eight. So that's a little bit unfortunate, but yes, I benched Foden. That was the, 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 the risk that I took because I've still got Greenwood and I still think Greenwood could perhaps equal or at least get close to Foden. Uh, and Foden, let's be honest, it was a punt that we took. We brought him in and he didn't do well recently and I just didn't want to go with three Man City players and have like two of them on the bench. So that was a risk that I took. Uh, if Greenwood doesn't play, I think he will, um, then Foden will come on for eight points. So I don't feel too badly about it. But Raheem Sterling, again, fantastic fantastic form uh i'll talk about more about game week 38 players later on but here's a spoiler guys if he plays if he's announced as starting against norwich he's probably going to be my captain uh, Martial fernandez yet to play greenwood yet to play jimenez with five points getting a cheeky little assist could we be a bit fortunate on that one yeah i don't think he really played it in more ricocheted over but Hey, he got the last touch for Wolves and it went to a Wolves player. They scored. It's an assist. And I believe he's just had his baby now. So I don't think there's going to be any paternity issues. Um, but we'll have to keep an eye on that one. Danny Ings, what could have been? Four points, got a goal, got a penalty. And then he misses it for a minus two. Now, I didn't really remember this because I've not been in a situation where players I have take penalties and miss them. And I, you know, I just thought minus two for a penalty is is crazy you get a red card and it's a minus two but you miss a, an opportunity where you know players miss sitters all the time and yes a penalty is a really good chance but minus two let's just have it as a zero or at most a minus one i just feel minus two is a little bit too harsh and it's a nine point swing we could have been sat here with 59 points and five players left to play what a dreamland that would have been in so what could have been nine points lost because obviously bonus goes out the window as well. What an unfortunate shame. But so far, so good. Uh, I think I'm maybe about 20 points off the top 100k. But we'll just have to wait and see how this game week finishes. And of course, how game week 38 shapes up. So how are we shaping up for game week 38? I did beg and plead people to please save two free transfers for game week 38. And please hold those transfers for as long as you possibly can can because early team news so for example you can see i'm currently benching greenwood and it's going to be Foden, sterling and de bruyne now i cannot look past manchester city for game week 38 and i'm just waiting i've got two free transfers in my back pocket so if it turns out kevin de bruyne doesn't play and mares does de bruyne to mares you know if sterling doesn't play and it's silver and mares and not kevin de bruyne and sterling my two free transfers will probably be kevin de bruyne and raheem sterling out for mares and silver whichever manchester city players i've got if all three of my man city players are benched so foden sterling and de bruyne i'll bench foden i'll bring on greenwood and i'll swap de bruyne and sterling for the two big manchester city players that's going to be my plan uh, I don't think the Liverpool players will get benched for the last game because they've got nothing to do after it. Uh, hopefully Doherty because they're still chasing European football and they're against Chelsea. I don't think the United ones will get dropped because they're fighting for Champions League. Um, I can't see Danny Ings getting dropped because he's in a race for the Golden Boot. Pope gets dropped. McCarthy comes on, so that's perfectly fine as well. So I'm literally just eyeing up those Manchester City players because I think everyone else is going to play. If that doesn't happen, then that's just an unfortunate end to the season and our top 100k dreams fall flat at the final hurdle let me know what you are going to do for your game week 38 plans please 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 let me know if you think i'm wrong saving your transfers right till the end just make sure you've got a good internet connection and don't leave it till like two minutes before or even five or ten minutes before because sometimes um too many people on the website and it, and it crashes the website and the last thing you want to do is have two free transfers and you're there refreshing and you get an error message and you don't even use your two free transfers at the end so at least set up your bus team captain and your bus team so if if everything goes wrong you've at least got your, your preferred start in 11 so let's have a look then at what players do i think you should target at. so for the free hitters out there this might be a good section for you or similar to me you got two free transfers here's my top selection of players uh who i think you should target for game week 38 and to be honest there's not a lot of surprises 
So first off, of course, it's going to be Manchester City. Any Manchester City attacking asset that starts. You could go for a defensive player that's going to start as well. But let's be honest, you're going to look at goals in this final game of the season. So keep an eye out on that early team news. So on Twitter, you've got FPL Rockstar, who I do believe said he's not going to be here for game week 38. But FPL Scarface seems to be quite reliable at the moment. So just be careful at Pep Roulette. Be careful of the... Uh, future Champions League. Uh, let's not even look at 90 minutes. So yes, the likes of Kevin De Bruyne just played 90 minutes. Does that necessarily mean David Silva is going to play the next game? We don't know. It's, it's Pep Guardiola, right? So I've already said before, if, if Raheem Sterling starts, he's got the captain's armband for me. I think he will. It's a good thing that they're not in the FA Cup final because that means there's perhaps a slightly teeny teeny tiny bit less chance of rotation because all they've got left after this is the Champions League so just keep your eye on that early team news but I'm just not looking past Manchester City attacking assets you could put the captaincy on someone like Salah or Mane and think that's a more differential option but actually still Raheem Sterling has a lower um, ownership percentage at overall percentage maybe not inside the top 10k that's fine but depends where your goals are but for me personally i cannot look past manchester city at home to norwich for the final game of the season so we're looking at the liverpool boys here and to be honest you could put trent alexander arnold and robertson in this one as well because attacking wise newcastle aren't the biggest threat but let's not ignore mo salah and sadio mane golden boot chasing both of them are top right up there with the fpl scorers of the season newcastle are a holiday team they're on the beach They've conceded 10 goals in four games, and they've got so many injuries at the back. So Lascelles, uh, Willems has already gone. He's been out long-term. Shard, Dummett, uh, Lejuin, they're all out. Kraft is a doubt. So they've got Fernandez, Richie, Manquillo, Rose, and Yedlin as the only fit registered defenders. It's the last game of the season, so I don't suspect a lot of rotation for Liverpool because after this, it's the summer break. There's no FA Cup. There's no Champions League. So I don't think they're going to drop them for the last game of the season. So, again, attacking, using, a lot of people will have their eyes on Manchester City. If you, for some reason, think Norwich could do another, could do the double over Manchester City, or you think there's going to be mass rotation and you see the likes of Sterling not playing, Amare's not playing, and you don't fancy going for David Silva or Bernardo Silva, then Sadio Mane and Mo Salah are still fantastic options for Game Week 38. I also still believe the United attacking assets are going to be uh, good, even though they've got a tough Leicester City fixture uh, and basically winner takes it all for that last Champions League space. Uh, but Spurs destroyed Leicester 3-0 on that fast counter attacking break and Manchester United are equally as good at that kind of attack. So a host of defensive injuries to Leicester plus Sionchu being suspended means a weakened and more importantly a slower Leicester defence that could run into a lot of trouble against speed merchants like Rashford, Greenwood and Martial. So Fernandez would be a good option. United might sit deeper because now they've got a points advantage uh, if unless they have lost to West Ham because this is before the Manchester United-West Ham game. But let's just say Manchester United have won that match. Then United are in a stronger points position so they'll probably be a little bit deeper. So Fernandez might not be a, a, as a strong of a, as a... As a asset compared to Marshall, Rashford and Greenwood. So I'm going to choose Marshall and Rashford as the top picks for the Manchester side against Leicester for this game week. So who thought we'd be here? Where we're re back to recommending Hyung Son and Harry Kane. So what an inconsistent up and down season for Spurs. But four goals in two games for Harry Kane. And he looked really sharp. And two goals and two assists in three games for Hyung Wing Son make them viable options against a beached Palace side who have been defensively awful since the restart. 17 goals conceded in eight games. And let's not also forget now Van, Al uh, Van Aanholt, Gary Cahill, Tompkins, and now possibly uh, Mamadou Sako out for the week. Could be a good time to pick Harry Kane and Hyoming Son. So what I said earlier about all eyes are going to be on Manchester City, and then people, a lot of people still have Mo Salah and uh, Sadio Mane, but not a lot of people will be looking towards Spurs. However, I wouldn't double up on them, however, because of the price, because they're quite expensive, 9.7 million for, for Sun and 10.9 million for Harry Kane. But also, there's always that possibility that Spurs are going to bottle it. You don't know what Spurs side they're going to come out. Is it going to be the side that's going to come out and win 4-0? Or is it going to be the side that comes out and draws 0-0 and Harry Kane is playing left back? You, you, you just don't know. So I wouldn't double up on them. But in terms of a, a, a differential big player pick against a very poor out-of-form team, as Palace are at the moment, then these boys could be a good option for you. 
Next up, budget player of the year, Danny Ings. The Saints forward started this season at 6 million. Now he's 7.6 million and 190 points to his name, making him the eighth best FBL player of the season. A final home game against an out-of-form Sheffield United side, plus a glimmer of golden boot hope and potential could make Danny Ings a good game week 38 pick. And he has actually really brought up that that age-old argument, form versus fixtures. Now, so many people will always look at fixtures. I myself find it very difficult to look at Danny Ings or a lower, mid to lower table side against a top five, top six team, especially away from home. But this man has been the absolute coupon buster. The fixture myth has been put to bed. Surely now we have to focus on form and it's because of one man this season and it's Danny Ings. Now we've got Mikael Antonio, the West Ham machine, 7.1 million five goals in two games including that ridiculous four against Norwich Uh, and a final day game with relegation on the line as Antonio uh is again a fantastic budget option. Playing out of position, so he's a midfielder, but he plays as the lone striker. Uh, He faces a battle against Villa, who are fighting to stay in the Premier League. Uh, This could actually work in West Ham's favour and Antonio's favour, because Villa still must come out there and get a goal or two. So I know they got a really good result by beating um, Arsenal, and it just puts them outside of the relegation zone on goal difference, but they can't rest on that. They have to go out and win against West Ham. And that means there could be some gaps behind the Villa backline. Villa's defence has not been good this season. I know they've just beaten Arsenal 1-0, but overall their defence has been pretty shocking. And if they have to sort of come out and get a goal against West Ham, I can easily see Antonio getting in behind that defence. So that makes, for 7.1 million, Antonio a very good pick for this game week. So finally, here's where I would have said Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. However, a dismal performance against Aston Villa means that Arsenal must win the FA Cup if they're to have any European football next season. And this has actually put my put doubts into my mind about Aubameyang even starting. So yes, he's chasing the golden boot. Yes, Watford are defensively shocking. However, the team needing European f- football is more important than Aubameyang getting the golden boot. Watford have a tendency to get into Arsenal's head, if you remember that infamous uh, Cajones Troidini quote, and Watford are fighting tooth and nail to stay in the Premier League because their Premier League status is fully on the line. So a lot of people will be looking towards Aubameyang because they had Villa and Watford for the last two but Arsenal have nothing to play for now and Watford have everything to play for Watford are a strong physical side that have a good history against Arsenal Uh, and I actually could think that Aubameyang might get benched for this just so he's fully fit for the FA Cup final because if they win that then they have European football next season so I still think he will start but The fact that Watford can get into Arsenal's head, they're a physical side that can really apply pressure to Arsenal. And the fact that they've got the Arsenal on the beach. Let's look at that Villa game. It wasn't a good performance. And well, I just think that Watford are going to put it all in because literally if they don't go out there and beat Arsenal in the final game of the season, they are relegated. So that's it for the Game Week 38 preview video. I hope you enjoyed it and enjoyed this season. I've had just a little bit of practice for this video about some of the graphics we'll be using for more next season. Hopefully it looks like an improvement. I'm hoping my content and general channel will improve. This summer as well, there will be some videos. Fan Team's FPL game is going to come out pretty soon. But also I'm compiling a list of top FPL tips that has not just come from myself, but people within the community that have helped them see success. And hopefully we can share that and build our success for next season. And when the game is released, we'll be looking at top goalkeepers, defenders, midfielders and forwards and building our new team for the new season together. Hopefully you've enjoyed this journey. And I might see you on Friday in a live stream at 12 o'clock UK time at lunchtime. And hopefully I'll see you there. Good luck for the final game week of the season. Hold those transfers. Pick that right captain. And let's get those green arrows and finish the season strong. Thank you for joining me this season. And as always, have a good one.